Hi, I'm Ben Mudrak. Hi, I'm Shashi Mudanuri. Today, let's talk a little bit about collaboration in research. It seems like so many of the really groundbreaking studies come from an interdisciplinary approach, labs working together that maybe aren't traditionally in the same field but have an overlapping interest yeah. and work together on, on something that's, that advances both, both fields or, or the, the combined field of the boundaries. Um, what's your sense of that? So I think that you are correct in that collaboration is happening more and yeah. more, and uh, we have even done some research into that and, and seen the effects of, of mm -hmm. uh, internationalization, globalization. Mm -hmm. I think technology, of course, has yeah. been a major part, uh, and and interdisciplinary studies have have done more than just bring a particular piece of knowledge to yeah. the public, but have created whole new fields. Yeah. And you can see that with the new journals and citation maps yeah. that spring up just because yeah. of these connections. And I think it's still a major challenge, the, the volume of researchers mm -hmm. that are out there. It's really impossible within your field, let alone outside of mm -hmm. it, to know what people are doing. Yeah. And it, it feels like yet another great opportunity mm -hmm. for the industry or academia as a whole mm -hmm. to figure out how to, how to foster these collaborations yeah. in a way that isn't super time intensive for yeah. the individual researcher. Yeah, what advice do you have for some, for PIs out there who want to find collaborators, work together on, on overlapping areas, and make an advance that maybe is non-traditional in their own, own narrower field? Uh, what are some best practices to, to find really good collaborators? Sure, uh, I think that one of the important things to do is when you are looking out there for what has been published mm. in your area yeah. to not lop off the pieces that come from journals that you never read. Yeah. And this is something that again I see great uh, great changes in thanks mm -hmm. to, to technology. It used to yeah. be you had to pick up a journal and, and yeah. read it yeah. and that simply doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it's, a, it's somewhat about creating, really creating a, a broader search and saying well I work on this particular bacterium mm -hmm. but but at the same time, I work on some of these basic metabolic functions or there's chemistry mm -hmm. involved and, mm -hmm. and thinking, all right, well, where can I look to see what people are doing that involves that mm -hmm. yeah. and, and not thinking so, so narrowly. Yeah. Uh, so I think... Yeah. Um, some of the collaborations that I've seen that are really interesting are where there's a key competency that's, that's complementary, supportive to the other group yeah. mm -hmm. and vice versa. And it could be, it could be a, sp a specific... Um, protocol that someone is great at that uh, a chemist may not yet be familiar with <clears throat> or vice versa. A chemist is incredibly talented at finding the right um, right chemistry formula to create a certain kind of reaction that a biologist just might not be familiar, familiar with. I've seen some really interesting collaborations where uh, a Japanese or Chinese lab has funding and earmarks a certain amount of funding just for the collaboration mm -hmm. and there's a a US lab or UK lab that may not have the funding but has a great deal of experience and yes. talent and in, in a way it's sort of a joint venture it's a, sort of a partnership where one party shares the capital the other party shares the talent they bring together their interests and they define a few targets from which they can produce yeah. a result and create a, a successful paper AJE how research breaks through